The Smith chart is a graphical tool that is very useful to help solve a wide variety of RF and microwave complex impedance matching and transmission line problems. In this short basics video, we're going to take a quick look at how complex impedance is represented and illustrated on the Smith chart. The Smith chart is comprised of a series of concentric orthogonal circles that represent the real part and the reactive part of a complex impedance. Complex RF impedances are typically represented by a real part and a reactive part. On the Smith chart, the real part is represented by a series of concentric circles. Uh, the horizontal line through the center represents like a pure resistance with no reactive component at all, and the center of the chart represents the system impedance. Most Smith charts are printed in a normalized fashion, meaning that the center will show 1.0 instead of 50 ohms, which is a very typical RF system impedance, so that the chart can be used for other system impedances besides 50 ohms. But in our case, we'll just uh, represent it as Z0 or the system impedance. In order to get back to actual impedance values, you would need to multiply the values obtained on the Smith chart by your particular system impedance. As you move to the right along the uh, baseline axis, you go higher and higher in resistance until you get all the way out to the outer circle, and that represents an infinite impedance or an open circuit. Uh, conversely, as you move to the left, uh, you'll get lower and lower real components until you get to a short circuit. So a short circuit from an RF standpoint is represented at this location in the Smith chart, and an open circuit is represented here. The reactive component of a complex impedance is represented by this set of curves. This is actually a series of circles, but we're only showing the portion that lie inside of the Smith chart here, but the reality is it is a series of circles that expand around and beyond this outer perimeter. Uh, inductive reactance is represented by curves above the baseline, and capacitive reactance is represented by the curves below the baseline. Now that we know what these circles and arcs represent, if we actually look at the Smith chart, you can actually now see them. You can see the circles here that all kind of uh, are tangent to the open circuit here all represent values of R, and then all of these arcs that are leaving, or that terminate, if you will, at the open circuit point are the inductive reactance and capacitive reactance circles. So we can represent any value of R plus JX by any point uh, within the Smith chart. In order to help visualize the impedance on the Smith chart, we're going to use the uh, Vector Network Analyzer and this uh, relatively large overscaled uh, circuit, which consists of a large variable capacitor, a variable inductor, and a series of switches that allow me to put the inductor or capacitor in series or in parallel with the load, which I've also got uh, as a potentiometer, so we can adjust the real part as well. Here's the basic schematic of my demonstrator circuit. Uh, it's a variable inductor and a variable capacitor that can be switched into circuit uh, with this double pull, double throw switch. So we can select either L or C. And then this uh, double pull, double throw switch allows us to switch the variable element in series with our load, or by flipping the switch in the other direction, we'll put the variable L and C in parallel with our load. Uh, therefore, we can represent each of these four situations, a series capacitor, series inductor, shunt capacitor, and shunt inductor with respect to our load. This demonstrator was built with some very large-scale components so it could be used effectively in front of a, a live audience at ham radio meetings and things like that. So as such, it's really only usable up to a, a couple of megahertz. Let's start off by putting a series capacitor uh, with our load. Now, if the capacitor is very small and the frequency is very low, this is going to look more and more like an open circuit. And as the capacitance goes up and the frequency goes up, the capacitor becomes more and more out of the circuit, and essentially we're going to see mainly our 50 ohm load. So let's take a look at it on the VNA. I'm sweeping frequency from about 300 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. I've got the capacitor dialed to its minimum value, which is on the order of 70 to 80 picofarads. So we can see at 300 kilohertz, we're looking very close to an open circuit because the capacitive reactance is quite high, so we don't even see that 50 ohm load. At 10 megahertz, we're going to you know, the impedance is actually getting lower uh, because at 10 megahertz, 70 picofarads is, is reasonable. It's a couple hundred ohms. 
as I turn the capacitance up, we can see ourselves tracing across or tracing around. And notice that we're essentially tracing around the constant resistance circle. Okay, in this case, the 50 ohm constant resistance circle, because we're not changing the 50 ohm resistance. We're only changing the, capa the series capacitance. So we're only changing the, you know, the Jx portion of the R plus Jx equation. So it's very easy to see how that we're tracing ourselves around that constant resistance circle. Now, if I go and adjust the 50 ohm resistor that is at the termination, we can actually see that we'll, I can change uh, the entire shape of that curve by moving it to other constant resistance circles. So now I've got it dialed into about 25 ohms, and now we're dialed into about 10 ohms, and uh, we go up to a higher impedance. We can kind of see there's, you know, that's I guess our 70 ohm line. Let's see if I can bring it back to 50. And there we go, we've got it on 50 ohms again. Now let's uh, throw this switch and put the variable inductor in series and see what that looks like. Okay, now I've got the inductor in series. I've got the inductor dialed down to its minimum value, which is about a, a half a microhenry or so. And again, at a half a microhenry, there's very little uh, inductive reactance at 300 kilohertz, so our marker 1 is sitting very close to our system impedance of 50 ohm resistive. And at 10 megahertz, we're seeing a little more inductive reactance uh, due to that uh, inductor value. Let me dial up the uh, variable resistor or variable inductor here, and again we can see ourselves tracing around that uh, constant resistance circle as we bring the inductance higher and higher. Now, adding a series inductance or a series capacitance might be a portion of what you're doing when you design an impedance matching network to uh, adjust yourself from some complex impedance to the normalized system impedance. However, the other piece of it is you might add a shunt capacitor or shunt inductor. Now, how is that represented in the Smith chart? Let's take a look at that. When adding these elements in series, you're simply adding the reactive component to the real component. However, if you're going to be adding elements in parallel, it's a lot more convenient to typically talk about admittance. And that's where you're adding the uh, uh, conductance components to the susceptance components, or one over the resistance and one over the reactance. So there's actually a, a complementary series of curves on the Smith chart called the admittance curves. Now these admittance curves are really the same exact curves that we looked at uh, for the impedance curves, except rotated 180 degrees. If you take this chart and you spin it around 180 degrees, you have these charts back here, and that's how they're derived. So these circles now represent constant conductance values, and these arcs represent constant susceptance values. Let's take a look at that on the VNA and we'll start off by putting the shunt capacitor uh, in parallel with our load. With the capacitor at its minimum value um, it's going to essentially look like a very high impedance so we're going to see mainly our load and as we increase the capacitance value and as we increase frequency we're going to start reducing that impedance and we'll see how that is represented on the Smith chart. So now with the capacitance at its minimum value, we're basically sitting right at our system impedance. But as I increase the capacitance value here, we can now see ourselves tracing around you know, what we can imagine is our constant conductance circle uh, for that uh, 50 ohm load impedance. Now similarly, we'll switch in a shunt inductor. And uh, as we bring the inductance value higher and higher, uh, that inductive reactance that's shunting the load is getting higher and higher and therefore becoming less and less a part of the circuit and we start approaching our system impedance. At low frequencies the inductor looks more like a short circuit so we're kind of approaching our short circuit over there. And again if we adjust our load resistor instead of being 50 ohms we can actually see how we're going to be tracing around other uh, constant conductance circles other than the 1 over 50 ohm conductance circle. Now you may have noticed that all the Smith charts I've shown you uh, don't have the admittance curves on them, they only have the impedance curves. Of course, we turn the chart upside down and now these curves are all the admittance curves. Now you don't really have to do that. The axes are labeled uh, both ways with the impedance and uh, admittance components and there's actually a little bit of a graphic trick to do the conversion between them. Let me show you a quick example. Let's say the impedance that I have that I want to convert to uh, admittance 
is normalized to 1.4 plus uh, J 0 0.8. Uh, to convert this to the admittance, we simply take a compass and we draw from the system impedance, you know, center, uh, through that point and all the way around the Smith chart. And then take a straight line from our uh, impedance component through the center and cross the circle on the other side. And when we cross on the other side, that becomes our admittance component. So the conversion from an impedance of 1.4 plus J 0.8 to uh, admittance is 0 0.54 minus J 0 0.31. Very simple, no math, a real easy to convert between uh, impedance and admittance on the Smith chart. I hope this video has given you some insight into how complex impedance is represented on the Smith chart and how to convert from complex impedance to complex admittance. In future videos, I hope to deal with topics such as reflection coefficient and SWR and how they're represented and computed off the Smith chart, as well as uh, developing impedance matching networks and also the effect of transmission line length on the impedance seen by a transmitter when looking into a load. Anyway, thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If there are other topics regarding Smith charts that you'd like to see uh, videos on, let me know and I'll add them to the list as well. Uh, thanks again for watching as always. And we'll see you next time.